episode 44 of the Collecting Confidant with your host Gunstar Hero and I'm back this week with a trio of bite-sized arcade experiences that are all easy to learn but hard to master. The first one I am super excited that this is getting a physical release because I haven't played this in a number of years and I had no idea how much the game has evolved since its original conception back in 2015 the first game we're talking about is Kung Fury Street Rage Ultimate Edition, which is getting a physical release via limited run games for the PS4, PS5, and the Switch. I'll be getting into those details shortly. But if you have never heard of this franchise, first of all, it's based off of a 30 minute film that you can watch for free right now on YouTube called Kung Fury. And I know it's super popular and famous, but if you still haven't seen this wonderful, hilarious send up of 80s buddy cop and kung fu films man stop this video right now go check out the link in the comments you've got to see kung fury it is such a blast and absolutely hilarious so check that out right now and come back all right now that you're back to the video Kung Fury Street Rage Ultimate Edition is a compilation of the base game which came out in 2015 around the time of the film's release and all of its expansions that have come out since. And like I said, I had no idea how much this game has evolved. So let's take you on that journey and cover all the different components of this excellent compilation which is really gonna serve fans of this franchise. So starting from the beginning, the game includes the base game known as Street Rage which essentially was just an endless beat em up with very simple controls and was modeled after 2014's One Finger Death Punch where you simply have two buttons. You have a left attack and a right attack and all you're doing in the back alleys is just killing swarms of Nazis coming to you left and right, left and right, and you're simply accumulating a score over time, seeing how long you can go. And it's a very rhythmic, twitchy game with very tight controls, very fluid and demands precision and can get quite difficult in later stages. So this was the base game and originally all you could do was play as the main character Kung Fury in one setting, but now because the game has evolved so much, you can actually play as one of five selectable characters in the endless mode, whether it be Kung Fury, or his partner Triceracop, or Hacker Man, Barbariana, and even the newly added David Hasselhoff. But not only that, you can actually select from one of five selectable stages from the Day at the Beach DLC, which we'll be covering shortly, which include not only the Back Alley, but Dream World, the Viking Age, Sewers, and the Beach, just to add a bit more variety, because each of the characters has their own specific attack style, their own unique special attacks, and their own strengths and weaknesses, which if you played the original games, you kind of had to figure out on your own. Luckily in this game, it now also includes Hackerman's Hack Academy practice mode, where you can take any one of the five selectable characters and learn them inside out via tutorial mode. So if you're not quite familiar with how each character bounces against the other, this will teach you in this great newly added practice mode. So those are two cool modes have been added. The original game came out around May of 2015. I bought it back then, played it for a bit, put it down because it was basically what it was. It was just an endless beat em up and it didn't really have much to it other than that. So I kind of forgot about the game, not realizing that it was getting expansions over time. So Later that year, they decided to take that base concept and put it into a story mode known as the Arcade Strikes Back. So this was the first expansion where now you go through five stages being forced to play as each of the different characters, minus David Hasselhoff, fighting different bosses and learning how each of the characters work. And I will say, this is probably the most difficult mode in the game because it requires precision, twitchy gameplay and the difficulty ramps up quite a bit as you get into the later stages but it is ultimately rewarding and has a very forgiving checkpoint and continue system so definitely a lot of fun here plus 
they actually were able to bring the original actors back like Thor, Barbariana, and provide actual voiceovers for this campaign. So that's a lot of fun. But the fun does not stop there. The Ultimate Edition compilation also includes a Day at the Beach DLC, which came out in 2021, which includes David Hasselhoff now as a playable character in addition to the original roster. But this is where the game takes its biggest evolution from being like a one finger death punch clone to a full fledged side scrolling free roaming beat em up in the vein of Double Dragon Final Fight. This blew my mind when I finally played because I, I couldn't believe how much the game had evolved. You can now pick any one of the characters and you have your attack button, you have a push mechanic and a separate button for your special attack. You go through five different stages with bosses and all the various enemies. Unfortunately, no voiceovers in this mode, but you do have a two player local co-op mode and this was just an utter blast of play. So you've got a buddy to play with, just jump in. It's super easy to get into. Doesn't take a lot of explaining, even to people who aren't very familiar with these types of games. It's easy to jump in and play. This was an absolute blast. And I was really happy just to see how much the series had evolved from start to finish. And of course, it is captured all in this wonderful compilation called the Ultimate Edition, which you can now pre order physically via limitedrungames.com for the PS4, the PS5, and the Switch. The deadline for this one is Sunday, April the 16th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is basically going to be one standard edition, which includes the physical game plus a CD soundtrack, because I'm telling you, the soundtrack to this game, the synth wave is just banging. The graphics are on point. This should be higher list if you are a fan of Kung Fury. And if you aren't, the humor is utterly hilarious. And like I said before, the link to the movie it's free, it's on YouTube, it's in the comments, go check it out. You will not be disappointed. So stay tuned for this 44th episode of Collecting Confidant arcade theme. The next game we're gonna be talking about is a reimagining of a lost arcade classic from the mind of Jeff Minter. I gushed about this game, well, the original game anyway, quite a few episodes back when we talked about the Atari 50 anniversary celebration compilation. But now, it's getting this wonderful reimagining. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. And we're back on episode 44 of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. This week's theme being bite-sized arcade games that are easy to learn and hard to master. The second game is another one that I'm incredibly excited about. And I was shocked to even learn about its existence. I had no idea this was in development. This is Aka R, which is a reimagining of the lost arcade classic that was actually canceled way back in 1982 and was featured playably on the Atari 50 anniversary celebration. I covered this game quite a few videos back and Aka R was actually near the top of my top 10 list. I thought it was a travesty that this game was canceled. I thought it had so much potential had some really cool game design elements and thankfully is preserved now for all of us to play. But luckily on top of that, we now have a reimagining that came out recently this past February for all major platforms, including the Atari VCS and was designed by Jeff Minter of Lamasoft, who is also famous for reimagining other classic arcade games like Tempest 2000 for the Atari Jaguar and Tempest 4,000 for recent platforms. His reimagining of Aka R retains a lot of his sensibilities of design, humor, perfection, and psychedelia, which he is known for, and this is no exception. It is now getting a physical release via limited run games. It's open for pre-order for the PS4, PS5, and the Switch until Sunday, April the 9th. We'll get into more details soon, but Aka R. Let's talk about why this game should be on your radar, and if, especially if you're into old school arcade experiences with a little bit of trippiness, this is gonna be right up your alley. Gameplay wise, you control a star cannon known as the Aka R, which is affixed to a turret known as a Sentinel. And all you're doing is you're basically protecting the base from hordes of incoming alien attacks using bombs and ammo. So the way it works is you'll be using bombs, very sparingly may I add, so that you can control your combo meter. You'll be using your bombs 
and firing them at some of the different geometric planes to create shock waves, which will absorb enemies that are incoming, which when they hit the shock wave will in turn create their own shock waves to create this chain effect where when it really gets into the heart of the combo, sometimes you can almost put your controller down and just watch the chains and waves of explosions. It's quite extraordinary to see. And while all this is happening with every enemy you kill, not only are you building up your combo meter, but you're also building up ammunition for your cannon because some of the enemies are actually impervious to bombs and have to be shot down with your cannon which adds a bit of extra dynamism and freneticism to the gameplay. Now, if any of these enemies happen to breach your perimeter and get too close, just like the original Aka R, you have a zoom in button where you can actually jump down a level and start to attack the enemies that have gotten close to your base before they steal one of your life pods that are supporting your ship. In the original game, you had a shield you had to protect, whereas now you have these different life pods, which you can replenish by getting different high scores if you happen to lose one of them in the fray. So as you defeat these enemies, once you clear out any of the intruders that have breached your base, you can then zoom back out to the main playing field and keep going. The game is fast, very twitchy, and has a bit of a different vibe than the original game, whereas the original game was designed to be a quarter muncher and you could get killed very quickly. Jeff Minter wanted to give it more of a flow and to bring people in slowly. So there are 48 stages in this game and the first several are fairly relaxed and have a great way of slow dripping all the many different techniques and gameplay nuances to make you a full-fledged expert player. So. You'll be learning how to conserve bombs, how to use ammunition at proper times, collect power-ups, create chain attacks. There are so many different ways to have a great time in this game. In addition to the wonderful particle effects, the psychedelic visuals, which Jeff Minter is known for, this game really pulls you in from a sensory perspective, but then just ramps it up about halfway through the game. So if you're looking for some challenge, Oh, you're going to find it in this game. Trust me, it is really punishing, but is fair and keeps you coming back in. It has this wonderful hook. The one thing I will say about this game is that with games of this type where they have a lot of vibrant colors, crazy flashing lights and particle effects, this can be potentially detrimental to people with epilepsy or who are prone to seizures. Luckily, the designers have thought about that and have included some accessibility options to be able to tone down some of those color effects to make it a little bit easier in the eyes. But overall, I didn't find it too bad. I didn't find any eye strain. It was quite enjoyable to play and is really just a wonderful reimagining of this old arcade classic. As much as I enjoyed the original, I really love what Minter has brought to this from the ground up. It is truly a new arcade called classic and you can get this preserved physically for the PS4, PS5, and the Switch via limitedrungames.com. Again, until Sunday, April the 9th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there's going to be a standard version for $34.99 US and a deluxe version for $64.99, which is gonna include a plastic case, some other collectibles and such. So if you are a fan and you wanna have this on your shelf, that's where you can go to get this one. Stay tuned, we have one more game to talk about today on our arcade roundup. This one is going to be a rhythm game, but in the vein of Akar, heavy on the psychedelia and the sensory overload. This is a really cool one, stay tuned. And we're back on episode 44 of The Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. This week, we're talking about bite-sized AK experiences that are easy to learn, hard to master. The final game is a nice segue from the psychedelia of Aka R with an equally trippy rhythm game known as Music Racer Ultimate, which is getting a physical release for the PS4 and PS5 from a newer boutique site known as Premium Edition Games. This one is really cool if you're a fan of old games like Amplitude or Rock Band Blitz or the more recently released Avicii Invector, which incidentally was from the same developer that made Kung Fury, the first game that we talked about today. 
This one is a psychedelic racing game that has slot car vibes, meaning that you have different lanes that you go right and left with a touch of a button. And the whole point of each race is that you're racing in time to the beat of the music, collecting pods, adding to your score, and the more pods you collect without hitting an obstacle will translate into a combo score. So at the end of the race, whatever amount of pods you've collected and whatever combo you've been able to amass, you'll be able to translate that into currency, which can then unlock additional tracks and additional cars. And there is a lot of content to lock in this game. There are 14 tracks and 25 cars, lots of reasons for you to keep earning currency and coming back for more. But the real star of the show is the incredible banging electronic soundtrack, which is featured in this game from the bass tracks to the downloadable tracks you can get. So let's break that down. The game itself includes 43 bass tracks from a variety of different artists and genres, but mostly electronic. But then if that's not enough, you also have linkage to the Audius streaming service to get even more trending tracks from electronic to hip hop to pop, all different genres of dance music. That's all available for your fingertips in addition to a search function if you're familiar with the platform. But then even more, there's a third mode called the link mode, where if you are familiar with using a web dev server, you can actually connect to your PC or cell phone to import your own tracks. I will give you a warning though, this is very difficult to do, and I actually was unsuccessful in getting to work. I followed all the instructions, but could not connect to my PC. Apparently it is possible though, because I have seen videos on YouTube of other people doing it successfully, and the developer mentioned that they are looking into making this a little bit more accessible in the future by adding potentially iTunes or Spotify integration. But in the meantime, it is difficult to set up, but regardless, at least the music that is here and accessible is great. And the way it works is the game is procedurally generated, meaning that every single race you play is going to be completely unique based on the specific music track you decide to play against. I'm gonna explain. The way this works is that number one, the composition of the track you decide to choose is going to affect not only the speed of the race, but also the overall mood. You're gonna see different visual effects coming on the screen based on different points in the music. So I found that to be a very cool feature, but then also the overall musical track will affect where obstacles are placed and where the pods are arranged. Again, translating into a different experience every time you play, which is hit or miss because some tracks work better than other with some of the different races. So you're just gonna have to find what fits. Now, positively for the game, the graphics are excellent. The visualizers, the effects are really great. If not, maybe a little intense at some points. I did mention how the music is totally banging. And if you are playing on modern hardware like the PS5, you'll be able to enjoy this game at a fluid, blistering 120 frames a second. Plus the fact that each race is very unique based on the music you're playing gives it almost endless replayability. Now, here are where the criticisms come in. The game can be a little too much on the senses and when I first started getting into this game, I experienced quite a bit of eye strain and when my fiance was watching me play this, she also said that she was getting a bit of motion sickness. That may or may not be avoidable depending on your particular situation, but I will give you some tips if you decide to play this game on how to make your experience a bit more accessible. Number one, there are sound effects every time you collect pods which are not quite in tune with the whole vibe and flow of the music. So just turn those right off. You don't need them. They're extraneous and don't need to be there. Number two, by default, you are zoomed in really close to the car, which looks cool from a graphics perspective, but from a gameplay perspective, it can be a bit tough because it's hard to see obstacles coming up the way the tracks loop and go up and down. So I would definitely recommend zooming out so you can see all the pods and obstacles coming before you actually hit them. Number three, there is a thing called camera shake, which honestly, I guess was added to make the race a bit more dynamic, but depending on how aggressive the drums in the track can be, this can cause the screen to shake to an almost unplayable state. So I would recommend turning that camera shake all the way down to make the experience a lot more accessible. 
There's also an option for controls that are simple and advanced. Simple means that you're just going to play slot car style, meaning you press a button, you switch lane, you press another button, you switch to another lane. Whereas there's an advanced control, which gives it more of a traditional racing style. I just didn't find this very fun. I found the simple mode to be a lot more intuitive and twitchy. So I would stick to that. Outside of that, you can't really tone down the visuals like you can in Aka R. So if you are sensitive to flashing lights and colors, or you have a history of epilepsy or prone to seizures, you're probably going to want to avoid this game outright. But if you can handle it and stomach it, and you like a nice dynamic driving game that is kind of a visualizer, there's a lot to love here. And again, it is now available for pre-order for the PS4 and PS5 physically via premiumeditiongames.com for $50 US. You're also going to get a soundtrack with the base tracks, which are awesome so i definitely think it's worth the price point from that fact and it is a nice little experiment with a lot of potential from abstract art the developer i'm curious to see what they're going to be doing in the future so that has been a jam-packed episode 44 of the collecting confidant with your host gunstar hero make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one later game chasers and peace